Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going through Art of Electronics exercise 2.6. And in this exercise, we need to go through a Zener reference or Zener regulator design that we are given in the Art of Electronics book. So the question itself is asking us to design a 10 volt regulated power supply for load currents from 0 milliamps to 100 milliamps. The input voltage is 20 volts up to 25 volts. In the question, we need to allow at least 10 milliamps of Zener current under all worst case conditions. I'm not exactly sure what it means by worst case conditions, but I have gone through the exercise and I think I've got the right answer. In the second part of the question, we need to figure out what power rating the Zener diode must have in order to meet the design requirements. Let's first summarize the main points from the question. So we need to design a 10 volt regulator power supply. The load currents are from 0 to 100 milliamps, so we could have a load current of nothing all the way up to 100 milliamps. The input voltage is from 20 volts to 25 volts, and we need to make sure that we don't have less than 10 milliamps of current going through the Zener diode at all time. So first of all, this is the circuit that's been given to us in the question, or just above the question. So obviously the question tells us that we need 10 volts output voltage. So we have the load resistor here, so this is our load and this is going to be the output voltage. The Zener diode will need to be a 10 volt Zener diode. So how a Zener diode works is that when voltages above 10 volts appear here, the Zener diode will start conducting and limit this voltage to 10 volts. So what we're going to assume for the question is that the voltage over here is always 10 volts. So what we're saying is that the regulator is working all the time. So if there's 10 volts here, that means there is 10 volts on the load resistor as well. Now in the question, we've been told that the load can be as high as 100 milliamps and as low as zero milliamps. So obviously when it's zero milliamps, the load resistor is going to be an infinite value or not connected. And when it's 100 milliamps, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the worst case load resistor, which we will do for the question. Now we know there's 10 volts here. If we use KVL or Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can determine what the voltage on R1 is going to be. So if there's 10 volts here and there's a 20 volt power supply, both of the voltages should add up to the power supply voltage. The voltage is in parallel, which is basically these two will be the same. So if the voltage on D1 is 10, then the voltage on our load is going to be 10 as well. If V1 is 20, then that means that R1 or the voltage across R1 is going to be 10 volts. 10 volts here, 10 volts here, that gives us our power supply. Now if there was 25 volts on the power supply, then we're still going to have 10 volts here because the Zener diode is going to start conducting more current to limit this voltage to 10 volts. And that means that R1 is going to have 15 volts. Now both those conditions, we're gonna assume that the diode is working and the regulator is working so that we have 10 volts here. So the voltage across D1 and our load is always going to be 10 volts for the calculations that we're going to do. So the worst case load is 100 ohms and that is basically V equals IR. Now we determined that there's 10 volts on the load in all conditions. So the resistance value is going to be 10 volts divided by 100 milliamps, which is the maximum current, which gives us 100 ohms. Now if we decrease this current, the resistance will just go up. Now we need to pass at least 10 milliamps through the Zener diode. So we're going to use the lowest power supply, which is 20 volts, and the current through D1 is going to be 10 milliamps. The current through the load is going to be 100 milliamps because that's given to us by the question. So that means that the current through R1 has to be 110 milliamps. So that's Kirchhoff's current law. So the current going into this node is equal to the current going out of that node. So if there's 10 milliamps here and 100 milliamps here, that means we have to have 110 milliamps going through this direction. Now, if we use Ohm's law, we basically get 10 volts here and we've got 20 volts here. So this voltage over here is going to be 10 volts. So in order to calculate the resistance value for the worst case condition, we basically need to do 10 volts, which is the voltage across R1, divided by 110 milliamps, which is 0.11. And that gives us a resistance value of 90.9 ohms. So if we have 90.9 ohms over here, and our voltage regulator is working in that we have 10 volts over here, then that means 100 milliamps is going to be going down here and 10 milliamps is going to go down here. 100 milliamps is going down here because of this calculation over here. So if we have 10 volts here, then a 100 ohm resistor is going to pass 100 milliamps of current. So that gives us our load resistor calculation and our R1 calculation. 
So we have determined that this is 100 ohms and that this is 90.9 ohms. So that allows us to put a circuit together. We have our 90.9 ohms and our 100 ohm load. Now, like I said before, we need a 10 volt Zener diode here to regulate this voltage down to 10 volts. So you can see this circuit obviously I've built up on LT Spice and I'll show you a waveform at the end. But very briefly, what I'm doing is varying the input voltage from 25 volts to 20 volts and seeing what happens to the output voltage. So you got the output voltage, if I show you the previous slide, you got the output voltage here and you got the input voltage over here. So you can see that as the input voltage varies, the variation on the output voltage is not very significant. But there is some variation which I will show you right at the end. So that's basically our Zener regulator designed. But the second part of the question, we need to calculate the power rating for the Zener diode. So let's first of all start off with this condition over here. So we have our VS is set to 20 volts. And our load resistor is set to 100 ohms. Obviously, we calculated the R1 value to be 90.9 ohms. So if the power supply is 20 volts and the Zener voltage is 10 volts, that means that there's 10 volts across R1. So that allows us to calculate the current through R1, which is 10 volts divided by 90.9 ohms. So we're using Ohm's law over here. And that gives us a current of 110 milliamps. The load current is 100 milliamps. That means using Kirchhoff's current law, the current through the diode is 10 milliamps. Obviously, we know the voltage across the diode is 10 volts. And using that, we can calculate the Zener power rating for this condition over here. So obviously, that gives us a power rating of 100 millivolts. But this is not the worst case. So we're going to go through a load of conditions and see what the worst case is. So for the next condition, I'm going to use 25 volts as the power supply and keep the load at 100 ohms. So if the power supply is 25 volts and there's 10 volts across this junction over here, that means there's 15 volts on the resistor. Now if there's 15 volts on the resistor, the current through the resistor is going to be 165 milliamps. And the current through the load resistor is still going to be 100 milliamps because there's 10 volts over here and this is a 100 ohm resistor. That means that the current going through the diode is going to be 65 milliamps as that is the remainder. So if you have 165 milliamps going through here, 100 of that milliamps is going down here. That means that 65 milliamps is going down here. And we're calculating that using Kirchhoff's current law. Now using that current and 10 volts across the diode, that gives us a power rating of 650 milliwatts. Again, this is not the worst case. Now let's do condition three. So 20 volt power supply and no load, basically. So for the calculations, I've used 10 giga ohms. Basically think of this as not connected. So if the power supply is 20 volts, we have 10 volts across the resistor. That gives us a current of 110 milliamps. Now we have 10 volts on V out. Our load resistor is 10 giga ohms, and that gives us a very small current. So we're basically going to ignore this. That means that all the current that's going through R1 is going into D1. So we're going to have 110 milliamps going through D1. And then that gives us a required power rating of 1.1 watts. So you can see this is the highest power rating required for now. Now let's look at the last condition where I've changed the power supply to 25 volts. So this is 25 volts now. Our VR is still going to be 10 volts. Obviously our power supply is 25. That means that there's 15 volts across R1. If there's 15 volts across R1, then that gives us a current through R1 of 165 milliamps. Our load resistor is at maximum. So there's no load current or very little load current. So we can ignore it. So that means that the 165 milliamps that's flowing through the resistor is flowing through the diode using Kirchhoff's current law. Now, if there's 165 milliamps flowing through the diode and there's 10 volts across it, then that gives us a power rating of 1.65 required for the Zener diode. Now, this is basically the worst case power rating requirement for the Zener diode. So the answer to this question is 1.65 volts required in order to make sure that the diode doesn't overheat and functions properly for the requirements of this power supply. Now, if I was to design the circuit in real life, I would probably go like three watts because that's a very common value. So basically get a diode that's rated to three watts and you can have a fairly decent regulated power supply. But obviously you can see there is a lot of wasted power in this. So just switching over to LT Spice with the regulator that we designed using a Zener diode, you can see I've, I'm using a 10 volt Zener diode here, and this is just a random one that's available on LT Spice. I've got the value of R1 set to 
and I'm varying the power supply from 20 volts to 25 volts, which if I show you on here, you can see that it's starting off from 22.5, which is the midpoint, and the amplitude is set as 2.5. So the voltage goes from 25 volts at its peak down to 20 volts at the trough. I've got a 100 ohm load over here, and this simulation is basically just to verify that the question that we've answered is correct. So for condition one, which we described during the answer, we had 100 milliamps going through the load resistor. We had 165 milliamps. We had 165 milliamps going through the R1. I've changed the power supply just to be steady 25 volts. So this is case two, not case one. And that means that we're going to have 65 milliamps going through the diode. So you can see this confirms the calculations that we did. Now let me change this value to a very large resistor. So we're going to have very little current flowing through the load resistor, which we can verify with this. You can see there's one nanoamp flowing through the load resistor because there's 10 volts on the output. So let's now look at the current through R1. And you can see that it's 165 milliamps because there is 15 volts across it. And all of that 165 milliamps is going to flow through this diode. So you can see that over here, 165 milliamps is flowing into this diode. And if you wanted to calculate the power rating, you can basically look at the voltage across this, which is V out and the diode. So if you multiply those two together, you can do V out times I D1. And let's delete this one. So you can see that the power rating required for this is 1.65 volts. Ignore the minus sign, that's just because the current we're looking at is going up rather than down. So the maximum power rating we need for the regulator is 1.65 watts. Now let me change back to the simulation where we were varying the power supply. And this is just to show you how good the regulation is on this circuit. So you can see the input is going up and down. Now if you look at just the output voltage, you can see that it follows the power supply. So it's not perfectly regulated and the noise rejection from the power supply is not very good. However, you can see that the variation is only 16 millivolts. It might be interesting to build the circuit up in real life and see what, what it looks like in real life because this might be simulation. I would have expected a little worse performance, but maybe if I increase the frequency on this, then we will get some worse results. So let's try 10 kilohertz and see what happens. Now we're getting the same 16 millivolts of variation on the output line. So any ripple we have on here does get passed onto the power supply. However, the amplitude is not very significant. I think it'll be very interesting to build a circuit up in real life and test this. So I'll do that for one of my future videos. So thank you for watching. That's all I have to share with you for today. If you like the content, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to support this channel more, consider giving a super thanks so that I can invest it back into the channel and produce more content. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.